If 2025 is the year that you are going to be submitting your application to the medicine or dentistry, you may want to check out this video to find out what are some of the key updates and things that have changed for this application cycle that you need to be aware of so that you can submit your best application. As always, starting early, putting in a lot of time and being well prepared is the number one key to submitting your best application and getting into your dream university. But there are two specific things this year that have changed from the normal that are going to make a difference and have an impact on how you prepare and what you need to be aware of to focus on when it comes to your application. Now you'll have seen plenty of videos of me talking about the five key elements of any good application and what you need to do well. And if you want to remind yourself, you can check out this video here. But let's focus in on exactly the two specific things that are going to change this year that you should be aware of. Now the first one is the personal statement. Prior to this year the personal statement was 4,000 characters or 47 lines whichever one came first for you to talk about your reasons for wanting to study the degree, why you're suited to it and what experience that you have that makes you a suitable candidate. Now they have broken down the personal statement into three sections now so the word and line count so the character and line count is exactly the same but they have broken it down into three questions which you can divide however you like so you can split, split it evenly, split it weighted by what you think is more important or however you see fit. Now the three questions are why do you want to study this degree, what experience have you gained to explore the career further and what traits do you possess that make you think you'd be a good candidate. They're not verbatim that but it's that kind of vibe and really they are the questions of what you should include in a personal statement already. It's there to guide people who maybe don't have the right kind of guidance or aren't quite sure how to structure a good personal statement to make sure that they include all the important things. Now this presents a bit of a conundrum because because how do you structure it? What do you do? What do you change? And it's something that you're going to have to be aware of and follow this channel because we'll give you some videos on what to do and how to structure it. But when we structure our personal statement, as you can see in this video here, I always like to divide it into six. Now two six are why. So I always start, say we start with a good sixth on why you want to study medicine or dentistry, then the final bit to round off and conclude all of the things that you've talked about in the rest of the personal statement, but reiterating your why. Now for the remaining four sixths or two thirds for those of you who are maths buffs, uh, I would say I'd recommend that you use three of those sixths, so a half, on your work experience. Talking about what you did, what you learned and why it would make you a good doctor or dentist. And then the final sixth, which can borrow from other ones and maybe be a bit more than a sixth, maybe up to a fourth if you want to borrow from some of the other areas, is on your traits. And that usually comes from your extracurricular activities. So whether you've been captain of a sports team that's taught you leadership skills and team working skills or you might be fluent in another language and that is very similar to medicine and dentistry because it is like learning another language. They say that you learn about 100,000 words from medicine alone so it is, complete, it is like learning another language and it's good to be able to show that you think that way and there are several other hobbies and traits and extracurricular activities that you can demonstrate skills from that will paint you in a good light for why you should be selected for that university. And as you may have read, for some universities the personal statement is a really important part, for some they barely look at it, maybe only when you get to interview or when they're trying to decide between two candidates which one to make an offer to, but it's still a really important thing to pay attention to because it formulates all of your work experience, it makes sure that you know what you've done so that when you come to interview you have a really good record of some of the stuff that you've done that you're going to talk about. It's just a really important thing to nail and if you'd like some support with putting a really good personal statement forward, I recommend that you check out this video here to find out a little bit more about the Future Doc program and why we take those two to three percent success rates for grads or if it's a 16 or 15 percent success rate for undergrads applying to medicine or dentistry and every year we get over 90 percent with our students getting into their first choice medicine or dentistry course and last year we had a 93 percent success rate so check out that video like I said if you want to find out how we do that and how you can be a part of it if you wanted to apply to the program. Now the second second big thing that's changed this year is the UCAT. So what they have done is removed one of the five sections. So now it's only four and they've removed the abstract reasoning which was the logical kind of, uh, let's say it's a bit like the IQ test, you get shapes and patterns that you have to match and it's as the name suggests abstract thinking. Now the abstract reasoning is one that people have been using the formulas that we put out years ago to crack and you can see over the years since we've been doing that that people have basically it's the one where the score improved the most and got to the point where 
where people, it, was the, it went from kind of lowest or third or highest scoring to the top scoring section of all of them. So it really shows how our formulas that we're putting out there and the way that we're teaching people is really helping them understand how to crack the code of the UCAT. Now it's a shame that that abstract reasoning is gone, but everyone was seeming to do well on it. So it was a bit of a leveler. It wasn't really distinguishing one candidate from another, so they just got rid of it. But the good news is, again, on the Future Doc program, we have some really good techniques for the other sections and some crafty little tricks that we can help people get, get in a bit of an advantage and score that little bit higher than everybody else. Last year, we were getting lots of people getting 3,000 plus. Now, the maximum that you can get this year is gonna be 2,700. And that in itself is gonna be a bit of a game changer in terms of how the university's youth thresholds. So tactical selection is gonna be more important than ever because it's not going to be a simple case of them just taking a quarter off the threshold because it was one of the highest scoring ones and also it's the fact that we went from uh, the BMAP being a part of some of the university selection criteria to everybody adopting the UCAT is going to play another factor. So again, I talked about our program. One of the reasons that we have the success that we do is that we are incredibly granular and tactical about the universities that we're choosing. It's such an important element of it and really something that shouldn't be underestimated. It makes up those five key things that make a really strong application. And if you wanna find out exactly what those five things are and how to maximize them, I recommend that you check out this video here. But otherwise, if you are watching this video now, it is now the time to get going. The turn of the year is a really important time. I always like to say, you need to be preparing a year before submitting your application. So if you're submitting your application in September 2025, you really should have started preparation in September 2024. It's not too late, you can still make up for that by working hard, but my mantra is the sooner you start and the more time you put into your application, the higher your chances of success. So really, take this as your warning to get going now and really start focusing and honing in on your application. If you would like some help and to and be one of those 93% that get into their dream medical or dental school, like I say, check out this video here where you can find out exactly how we can help you. But otherwise, best of luck and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.